we are starting our experiment for fractional um, distillation. For the fractional distillation, an unknown will be given to students and we are going to use the unknown. It says fractional distillation mixture and uh, to, fill the, to fill the flask. When you insert the fractionating column, as I said, between the distillation head and the boiling flask, you want to make sure to use a three finger clamp and support this with the, with the clamp. If you don't use it, you don't want to see what's happening, but I'm going to just tell you that as soon as you open and lower the ring, trying to get the flask out to uh, add the chemicals, it will disconnect and, and drops and breaks. You want to make sure this part is secure. So simply use a adjustable three finger clamp Secure it, and when, when it is secure, now you can confidently open this part, lower it, and remove the flask. Remove the flask, this is secure already, is not going to drop. I use my not tasty donut, to support this flask, I will measure 30 milliliters of the mixture. This mixture is mixture of two liquid with different boiling points, but both of them are volatile. We are hoping that fractionating column would allow us to separate. Make sure that you have three to four boiling chips. Make sure this is greased, which is, is greased. Already I greased it when I was doing the assembly. I want to just make sure that it's sealed and greased properly. Add some more. Connect, secure. Add a keck clamp, right direction. It's kind of hard, but it's better to have it uh, to avoid any um, leakage of the, of the vapor. Bring up the heating mantle, proper height. So it's not touching, but it's close enough to heat. Connect it to the heating mantle. Uh, connect the heating mantle to power regulator, power regulator to the wall. We always turn on the water. Turn on the water gently. So when we turn on the water gently, you want to see the water flow. Condenser is filled up with water and there is a low flow of water. Turn on the water first, turn on the heat second. Okay, to turn on the heat, uh, we are going to start at 50. Wait for five, 10 minutes. If there is no boiling taking place, we are going to increase it. If there is boiling, we will wait until the vapor uh, makes their way to the condenser. Understanding that, in fractional distillation, there's a fractionating column. It's putting those vapors back, condensing, putting it back. So you will see some reflux and condensation, evaporation, condensation happening right here. And it takes some time. So I'm going to pause the video at this point, wait until it boils, and then I will show you the, the steps. Because it takes a long time, I don't want the video to be too long. Okay, the first distillate is being received now, now in the, the fraction one um, flask. And we, after the six drops, I'm recording the temperature for the first distillate. I'm taking a still shot to include that in the, in the video so you could actually focus and see the temperature so you could read the temperature um, as well. 
I switch the, after the first six drops, I'm going to switch the uh, flask fraction one with fraction two. As I said before, the first beginning of the distill distillation, they could have some of the uh, uh, impurities that was left in the condenser. We are not using that for analysis. Fraction two, what we are collecting in fraction two, we are collecting while the temperature is constant and we are expecting like the pure sample of the more volatile, or the compound with lower boiling point to be collected in fraction two. When the temperature increases or starts increasing, I'm going to switch the, the flask from fraction two flask to fraction three. And in this flask, I'm collecting the sample that I don't use it, but it's like between the two samples. So it could have some contamination. One other point that I, I was reminded to explain is like our fractionating column doesn't have any rubber hoses attached because we don't want to constantly cool down the fractionating column. We do need fractionating column to be gradually heated up. The temperature is going to be increased in a way that a compound with low weight or low boiling point the vapor of that would survive and make it to the condenser. And then when the second sample is boiling, because it has higher temperature, the vapor has higher temperature. When it condenses, it gives more energy back and it would increase the temperature of the fractionating column. And at that point, compound B, which has higher boiling point, um, the vapor of it, it would make to the condenser and we will collect. So as long as the temperature stays constant, I'm collecting the vapor, I'm collecting the drops in fraction, eight, uh, fraction two um, flask. So we will, can pause. We, we are not continuously recording because to avoid the long video, we get back to you compound with lower boiling point, which is a more volatile compound in fraction um, flask two. And the range of the boiling, um, it doesn't change while we are collecting one compound, one pure sample. Like it could, yeah, but it could go like up to like three degree. But if the temperature goes like by five degree up, that means the first fraction or the compound with the lower boiling point is already um, distilled. So at this point, since the temperature is almost 62, and yes, I, we are cha I'm changing the um, flask for fraction three. Fraction three, as I said, is between the two samples. I, it is, I just want to make sure that I'm not getting of the second compound mixed with my fraction uh, two, which is my pure sample. I need to measure the mass. I need to measure the refractive index. And I report the temperature of the 57 degree for the boiling point of the first, first fraction. So I'm going to cover it just using parafilm. Uh, so it doesn't evaporate while I'm finishing up the experiment. We wait for the um, second sample to, to distill. Because this thermometer is recording the temperature of the vapor, when compound with the lower boiling point evaporates completely uh, and there is no vapor here, that temperature also can, can drop. If, if that happens, like when you are doing the experiment yourself, don't be surprised because it's not measuring the temperature of the liquid, it's measuring the temperature of the, of the vapor. When the first one is gone, the second one has not reached yet, it can, it can drop. So we are waiting for the second sample to reach now because it stopped dripping, it means the first compound is out. Uh, we have to increase the temperature, 
for the second sample uh, to boil, which is going to happen at a higher temperature. We don't know what temperature yet, but it will happen. Okay, fractionating column. The first one, the first liquid um, already distilled. There is no vapor right now. Could see the temperature is dropping from 57 or 58, it went down to 52. The reason the temperature is dropping because the second compound has not vaporized. We are waiting for the second compound to vaporize uh, and the vapor reaches the thermometer. Okay, the fractional distillation continued until, I waited until the temperature stays constant. Now it's been constant for a while and I'm switching the fraction um, three flask with fraction four. I wanna make sure that the temperature stays constant. So what I'm receiving here is going to be a pure um, sample because I, I'm using fraction four and fraction two based on the procedure in the lab manual for my um, analysis, uh, measuring the refractive index and uh, measuring the properties of the sample. I wanna make sure that I have a pure sample and a pure sample uh, is collected uh, when, when, uh, for the liquid when the temperature stays constant. That's at least at that point, I'm sure that this sample that is being collected is going to be, um, is going to be pure. So what happened, we had the first sample um, and you will see the pictures that I took to, to read the temperature um, was collected over the first constant temperature and then fraction three was collected in between while the temperature was increasing. Now fraction four was collected when the temperature stayed uh, constant um, again, and I'm collecting fraction, uh, fraction four. One thing you have to be, be careful when you are doing distillation, when to stop distillation. You stop distillation when the desired volume has been collected, or you would stop distillation when there is nothing is coming out, when nothing is coming out, meaning that it, it's possible that the temperature is low or the boiling flask is dry. You don't, you never want to continue distillation until dryness. That is going to create some, um, you know, problem, the glass can, can break and you should never distill to uh, dryness. When you still have like few milliliters of the liquid, you want to stop the um, distillation. To disassemble uh, fractional distillation, you are going to follow the same procedure as we did for the um, as we did for simple distillation. You are going to remove the receiving flask first, um, turn off the heat, take it back. You're going to turn off the heat, disconnect from the wall, drop the ring to get the, the heating mantle removed from um, the flask, let it cool down. When it stops boiling, then you can uh, start disassembling the glass pieces from cold to, uh, to, to hot. You're going to stop the water, disconnect the hose from the faucet, so water drains out. It's everything very similar to what you saw in the simple distillation, um, simple distillation um, earlier. And we are going to continue with the uh, data, with the analysis of the of the liquid. But distillation at this point, it would be um, it would be stopped um, because we don't have a lot of liquid left in the. Uh, in the boiling flask. Thank you. <laughs>